Hey everybody, I wanted to share with you some new library finds and I've been doing, uh, I think this is maybe my third video of stuff I've been finding at the library. I've been going to a couple of different libraries in the area for the past month or so and I'm always amazed because, you know, even if two or three days pass, there's always something new and it's uh, relatively inexpensive. Some of the hardcover books are a little bit pricier, um, like up to $2, but really when you consider uh, how much you're going to use it for, it's not expensive. So this was one of the first things I saw, and at first, I, you know, it is their Fall Fashion 2012 edition, so it's like their mega chunky um, magazine, and when I was first flipping through it, you know, I saw lots of cool things that would make like great silhouettes for mixed media and lots of different things, you know, colorful things for collage. But I thought, you know, I already have a lot of magazines and even though um, this is just 25 cents, I'm still just trying to be aware of how much stuff I'm bringing into my house because I tend to be a clutter bug and um, I just, you know, I'm, I'm careful about that. But then I found the reason to grab it. I opened up this front cover and I thought this was neat because this is a an old, let's see if that's in frame, an old Vogue uh, cover from 1949. It says all the information right here. It was 50 cents back then. And then flipped it to this page. This is the first issue of Vogue, December 17th, 1892. So check that out. Doesn't that just look like the type of ephemera that we love to buy? I can't believe Vogue's been around since 1892. That was new to me. I, I really didn't know it had been that long. If someone had asked me, I would have maybe guessed, I don't know, 1920? So here's another one I found, and I grabbed this one because it just, you know, I, I love anything having to do with Italy. I hope to go there someday. It has really nice quality papers, and it's really more to be used as an art journal, you know, kind of an altered book. But then, and this is what I'm talking about, when you go to the library, you just never know, these inserts, which I'm thinking held uh, maybe old um, photos, I'm trying to think of the name of them, they used to go in the carousel type, um, oh you guys know what I mean, where you could flash it up on the screen. And um, this isn't, I think this is probably smaller than the pocket letters that have been going out the size of each of these little sections. However, there's another one on the back cover that is the same size and I thought I could either do two sets of pocket letters or I could glue these back to back because they don't have the back flap like the uh, baseball card things do. I've been wanting to get into the pocket letter thing and I just, it was just like one more thing that I wanted to do and so I'd been putting it off but now I felt like that was a sign so I will be working on some pocket letters and hopefully doing a swap soon and then this book was published in 1970 it's got a cool silvery co cover and I marked some pages in here because there were just so many awesome photographs but like, look at these old pictures. This one is from 1912. And I just marked these off with like some cardboard pieces. And it shows different ways that people have photographed over the ages. So the, um, this is from 1893. Some of the different techniques that they use, even in 1893, you can see that they use some really cool techniques and that was, you know, way before we had anything digital, and I think it's awesome that they were able to do this, 
you know, before it was even the 20th century. And this just looked great for a junk journal or some other type of vintage layout. And then this picture is just beautiful. It looks like a painting. It's a, it's a photograph. This one's from 1903. And then this section, each, each section has a theme. This is the sensual shapes of nature. And it's all black and white. Oh, it, as soon as I say that, it's not black and white. <laughs> okay, it's like 90% black and white. And uh, this is crystallization of a vitamin. 1967. So when I first saw it, I thought it was an abstract painting, but it is actually a photograph. And this one I thought was really cool because it shows this twin lens reflex. So you've got a vintage camera there that's really neat. And then this one I thought was so cool and they're showing another technique it says blurring backgrounds to emphasize movement. So check that out. I mean, you really, you get the old car and, I mean, this is how they rode cars back in the days. Like, I don't know if you guys ever saw um, Cheaper by the Dozen, not the newer movie, but the one that came out maybe in the 40s or 50s. I remember, you know, they had a family of a dozen children um, and they would sit in rows in cars like this no seat belts, of course. That was way before seat belts, and that's how they traveled. And if you if you get a chance to see the original movie, I really recommend it. It's an awesome movie. Um, it's it's emotional. It's um, I think it really captures a period in time and. It, it was one of my favorites growing up, and it's still one of my favorites. I, I would watch it again and again. And then this just happened to be, you know, because all these things are secondhand, just somebody's notes. I thought that was neat. I'm not even sure what the notes are about, and I feel almost like I'm spying on somebody, but it looks like it's like math notes or something. And has to do with photography, so they were... Um, they were studying when they wrote these. And then here's a really cool old photograph of this guy. I thought these were so, how cool is that? And it's got kind of a faded green background, really pretty. So yeah, these aren't all black and white because here's some color. And this I thought would be awesome as a piece of ephemera. I hope I'm getting that all the way in frame. It's just an ad for the, the new Kodak cameras. I thought this was, they look like they're laughing and it's got that cool like sepia tone. And then this one I thought was neat because it just shows movement. There's just a couple more left. I thought this one was so cute. Look at this little baby painting. So this section is called the Victorian Pioneers. So I guess that was taken, yeah, it says in 1856 that was taken. And then this made me think of Mary at the Mary Atelier. She does commonplace sketching. And this really made me think of her because well, this calls it still lifes. I mean, um, most of us have probably heard of still lifes, but it's taking objects that um, are around you, like in your house or out and about, and sketching and or painting them and really bringing them to life. Um, something, you know, you think of as common, but you can really do a lot of beautiful work with it. And then this last one I marked off, I know I've got to use this in something. That profile, the color is really cool. So I'm definitely, this is definitely going to be showing up. And then I want to be able to reuse this one. So I think I'm going to try to make a mask out of it so that I can use it again. 
And then just as a last little bit, I did want to show you guys. This wasn't enough stuff to do a haul video. And I was going to wait until maybe the next time I go to Tuesday morning, but I just really wanted to share these. I'm not sure which are which now because I bought two packs of ephemera from Seven Gypsies. This was a smaller pack, and I actually liked it even better than the first one that I got. It's got these really cute cards. Um... And just neat little sayings. This is like, I think this is like a little warthog. And he's reading. Advertisements. So this was another, um, I believe this was from the first stack that I got. But this was just another cool find at Tuesday morning that they didn't have the first time I had gone. And so I wanted to share that too. So um, I'd love to hear if you are participating in um, pocket letters, how that's going for you. Just any feedback about that and your ephemera finds. I'd love to hear about those too or anything else that you're doing that's mixed media, crafty. Because um, I definitely have two big homework assignments for myself and I'm trying not to get too worked up, which I am getting really worked up about it, the junk journal that I want to make. And I, you guys, I have seen so many awesome videos of people's junk journals and so now of course I'm going into this whole like it has to be perfect thing and which of course it doesn't. I mean the, especially the first one, like I should just let myself make a really crappy one, you know, and then go from there. But seriously, if you look on YouTube at people's junk journals, like they, they're incredible. And so I kind of am just, I feel like I'm buying new stuff and I'm working on other projects to avoid starting the junk journal. So I've got to stop that. Um, and just go ahead and start one. And uh, the pocket letters are a little less intimidating. I feel like it's similar to making ATCs, so it's smaller little bits. And um, yeah, so anyway, I, I know you guys know what I mean because I have read enough in comments and heard you guys talk enough to know that we all do this to ourselves and the artistic process, we put a lot of pressure on certain things and how it has to look and sometimes, you know, the most unplanned things come out the best. So I think it's really depending on what you're going for. I really like mixed media because it is messy and that is, I'm just not naturally an organized person and so I'm not type A personality. Um, and a junk journal to me, and this is why I probably never got into sewing either, um, I heard somebody say on their video that they they realized that sewing was not for them because they're not into uh, measurements and everything needing to be just so. She said she's more of a good enough person and that's kind of that like struck a chord with me. I just thought, yeah, good enough. I, I think with mixed media, I love that it can be sloppy and it can have a plan, but you can color outside the line, so to speak. So I think that's why the junk journal to me is, is intimidating, is that it, it is gonna require some more kind of exact measurements and, um, a lot of planning and thinking goes into that, so I think you guys know what I mean um, about the pressure that we put on ourselves, not just in this area of our lives, but in other areas too. So anyway, to end on a happy note, I'm excited to start going through these and start cutting out some of these images and putting them into projects, and thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a beautiful day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.